brushes, you know, how to import a brush and how to like, what kind of brushes we have in Krita, like what kind of brush engine, you know, types of brushes we have in Krita and how to use them for like, you know, what is their usage and we can go for it. So first thing, I'm going to just click on brush so we can test them. And there is a way how to like adjust brushes and stuff like that. But first thing we have to do is let's say that you're starting with Krita and you don't want to create new brushes, but you want to get some brushes, you know? So you go to Krita.org and you download like some brush pack and then you have no idea how to import the brush pack. So this is how you import brush packs or any packs, you know, whatsoever in Krita. You know, there are some, I don't think brush pads, palettes, like compositions and stuff like that. And they are usually in bundles. So how to import bundles, uh, go to settings up here, click on manage resources. And you get this little window. If you just started using Krita, this will be probably empty for you. So how to import bundle by button import bundles. Just click on this select bundle you want to import and click open. The bundle will show up in active bundles and you can either like in make them inactive or, you know, active again by these like little arrows here. You can create a new bundle. If you want to export your brushes, you just have to select your preset and put them in selected and then put name, description, some picture or whatever and find destination and save. Of course, you can edit bundle like add or, you know, remove brushes from your bundle. We can like do other things, import gradients and stuff like that. But usually people, when they are exporting something from Krita, they're just like packing it into bundles. So you don't have to actually import brush or something. You can import the whole thing and that's pretty much how it works. You can open the folder or, you know, check out what is actually in the bundle here. But this is how you import brushes in your Krita. Okay, now let's hit one second. Let's remove this one because, you know, I don't want to have two of the same in the same like, you know, Krita. So let's click OK. And your preset should show up somewhere here. Okay, if you can't find it in presets here, like in the like any groups here, tags here, you can just click on all it will show all brushes and you can find your brush there. These are the brushes I imported. So they are there and I can use them, which is cool. Okay, now let's talk about the types of brushes in Krita. And to kind of show you how, what type we have, what types we have in Krita, I have to like go into these brush engines, which is this little icon right next to your color foreground and background color. So click on it. And we have quite a lot of types of brushes in here. We have pixel brush, which is pretty much the brush you normally know if you use like, you know, GIMP or Photoshop, for example, it just, you know, it can be like textured a bit or, you know, as some like different types of, um, wait a second, I will change the color. So it's more visible. Okay. So we have these, you know, it's just a pixel brush. It, do it doesn't have any kind of smudge or flow in it. It's just a pixel brush, just changing the pixels out uh, under it. You can uh, set up your brush preset to whatever you want. You know, you can like adjust the opacity curves and another like tons of uh, tons and tons of other like options that you don't really have to understand from the beginning. I don't understand half, half of these options, but I'm just like trying to tweak them or stuff like that. Opacity is quite important. This is how opacity reacts to reacts to your pressure sensitivity on your tablet. For example, if I'm trying to do like some kind of gradient here, see, I can do like this gradient. And if I turn off the pressure opacity, it's just a peak, you know, it doesn't matter what I do. It's still a peak. Okay. That's enough. Enable it back. You can save your like preset or if you're changing just some like brush that or some preset that is already in your Krita, you can just override the preset. Okay. 
Now that's pixel brushes. Now we have color smart brushes, which, which are my favorite ones because what they do, I like smudging, see? <laughs> it's smudging itself. And you can do like really quick, trans really smooth transitions with them. I really like them. They are really good for painting. If you want to get, you know, this traditional painting feel of, you know, painting, this is, this is the kind of brush you want to use, you know, the color smudge brush type. There are like lots, loads of them in here. You can like adjust them all. I'm using some of them as well. I have some adjusted here, but yeah, you know, this type of brush is one of the, my favorites, I would say, because of the effects you can get from them. Then we have quick brush. What it does, it's quick. <laughs> uh, it's like a pixel brush, but really light weighted. Pretty much what it does, it's like really low, if your computer can't really handle Krita, these brushes will work best for you, but I don't know, I've never actually used it. Now we have sketch brushes, which are super cool brushes, because they have some like particle effects to them, which is really nice. You can check it out. You can like, if you're doing something, I don't know, some kind of design and you're not sure like how it's supposed to look right now, you can like use this kind of brush to create some kind of weird shapes, you know, these happy little accidents with them to create, you know, some cool design <laughs> out of them, which is nice. So these are like particle, like brushes with some particle effects, really cool. Now we have bristles, which are bristles, pretty much bristles. <laughs> See, it's like, it's, it's mimic, it mimics like the bristles, you know, like brush bristles thing. That's cool. You can use them for some things. I'm not really using them because they are too unprecise. They are like kind of doing what they want. I don't really like them. And we have shapes, you know, pretty much you can like <laughs> add weird shapes. These are just like for the like super, uh, What's the word? These are for like, you know, doing some weird patterns or weird shape things. <laughs> How would the name suggest? Now we have spray. Uh, well, it does what it says. It's just a spray brush. I'm not really using this one at all. Hatching. These are cool. If you're like doing something really stylized, you can like do some hatching with these. You can like have some different patterns on them. This one is cool, <laughs> you know, or like some with gradient, something that is not like, you know, repetitive, which is cool. I li I, I'm using this one from time to time. Now we have grid, pretty much does just these little dots. <laughs> it's okay. Like if you're like doing some, you know, like, points, I'd say, like this dot art that you want, like, you know, four dots, one color, then another color, you know, I don't know, how, like a pixel art thingy, almost. Uh, now we have curves. These are really similar to the, um, where we, we sketch brushes, but these are like more curve based, I would say, on, you know, on different types of curves and the particle effects around them is not random anymore. It's based on the speed and the angle you're drawing in. See, if I'm going like really slow and doing the same type of like shape, it does nothing. But if I'm going super fast, it's like totally different. See, uh, dynamic ink, like dy Dinan, it's like dynamic brush just do this like weird dots. If I'm going slow, it's like line. If I'm going faster, it's, there are just dots there. Now we have actual particle effects here. <laughs> Brush with particle effects. And it's super messy. <laughs> I don't know, it's it's cool for some like, you know, design thing, I, I say. Now we have clone, which is exactly what it says, but we can't really test it. Pretty much what the clone tool does, it's like it will clone something from another part of your canvas to that part when you're drawing. 
And I don't, I don't know how to explain this. Now we have clone tool, of course, like move or deform tool. It's just like a, if you know the liquify tool in, wait a second, let's, let's show it. Okay. Uh, deform. If you know the liquify tool in Photoshop, this works exactly like that. You know, you can just, you know, adjust some things, but it will deform your like drawings or paintings. So be careful with that. Uh, Tangent normal, I don't think you will ever need these on blur light, chalk, maybe the chalk can like be okay for someone. It's just a chalk brush, nothing really much. It's like really low. Uh, it doesn't require too, ma too many resources to do any like with him. It's like super lightweighted, so you can use it in the really big, like, you know, <laughs> big type of brush. You can use it with that. Ooh. Or get, you know, this grind, like this really noisy background with it. You know, like that. It's quite cool. Okay, so this is the type, these are the types of brushes uh, they are in Krita. That's quite a lot of them. I would say that the only thing you probably will need is pixel and color smudge. Maybe you you will use some of the other ones, but they are really specific. I'm not really finding them that like, you know, essential for drawing and painting. They are more like, you know, the icing on the cake. So I would probably use just pixel and color smudge type. Pixel more for sketching and stuff like that. Color smudge like, uh, Color smudge for, you know, painting and, you know, the feeling of the traditional, kind of traditional feel to your painting. These are the brushes I would use. Okay. Yeah, so that's it. This episode was kind of boring, you know, a little bit more into tools. It's not like I'm painting something or something like that or telling you something really interesting. But I think it's quite essential to know your tools in the software you're using. So I hope you find it a little bit interesting and that you actually learned something in this video. And with this, thanks for watching. If you like it, hit the like button. And if you don't, hit the dislike button or whatever it is. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.